Hello everyone! Following the AQA syllabus where you are expected to compare poetry with a prose text, we will compare poetry from the pre-1900 anthology with The Great Gatsby. In today's video we will go through an essay plan where we will explore love as lust into his queer mistress by Andrew Marvell and compare it to The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. As with previous videos, I will share some critics that you could use in your exam to hit the AO5 required. Firstly, both To His Queen Mistress and The Great Gatsby present love as lust through haste and desire to be with lovers. Marvell's speaker is hasty to be with his queen mistress. He writes, Had we but world enough and time, this queenest lady were no crime. Here the speaker suggesting that if there was just a little more time, their love could be legitimised by marriage. Time and world, i.e. life, is all that is needed. But since time and life are of short supply, his lover's queenness becomes a crime. Coyness is the quality of feigning shyness or modesty in an attempt to seem alluring. In The Great Gatsby, the eponymous character is also short of time. Despite waiting five years next November, he tries to always be close to Daisy. We see the epitome of lack of time in Chapter 5 when the defunct mantelpiece clock began to tilt dangerously at the pressure of his head. Here the clock represents time and its tilting highlights how time is not in Gatsby's favour. He tries to repeat the past but fails. Also the clock is defunct. Gatsby's desire to be with Daisy is not meant to be. However, as Thomas Flanagan states in the year 2000, Gatsby lives in the world of romantic energies and colours. Unlike Marvell's speaker, Gatsby's desire for Daisy is coloured with romance rather than lust. Thus, both texts present lust through the lack of time. In addition, love is presented as lust through time. As Marvell's speaker writes, A hundred years should go to praise thine eyes and on thy forehead gaze, two hundred to adore each breast, but thirty thousand to the rest. This splitting of time highlights the connection between time and lust. Two hundred years are devoted to the lover's breasts, creating a lust-driven aim. When Marvell writes the rest, perhaps this is a euphemism for his lover's genitalia. But time's winged chariot is hurrying near. Thus Marvell's speaker urges his lover to let go of social expectations and make love to him. Her virginity is no longer sacred as time is running out. Here the theme of carpe diem is further highlighted. Time and lust are also interconnected in The Great Gatsby. In Chapter 8, Nick tells us that eventually he took Daisy one still October night, took her because he had no real right to touch her hand. Here Gatsby actually fulfills his sexual desires with Daisy, unlike the speaker. He hastens the fulfilment of love because he doesn't have time to earn enough money to marry her. Indeed, as Jacqueline Lance notes in the year 2000, becoming Tom was Gatsby's dream. He wanted to be successful in the old money way, and he wanted Daisy. Tom had both the wealth of the old money status and Daisy. Gatsby, however, was left with nothing. Thus, both texts portray lust through haste. Moreover, both To His Queer Mistress and The Great Gatsby present love as lust through the themes of hedonism and sexual liberation. Marvell writes, Worms shall try that long-preserved virginity. Here, Marvell's speaker urges his lover to just make love with him because life is too short. He adds, Your quaint honour turned to dust. The adjective quaint creates a sarcastic tone. He mocks his lover for upholding societal expectations, but is selfish as he mocks her to get what he wants only. Marvell uses the theme of memento mori to get what he wants and to persuade his lover to make love with him. Indeed, Carol Rumens notes in 2008, the metaphysical conceit of the poem has become an ingeniously extended fantasy. The speaker imagines a world where his sexual fantasies are fulfilled. Sexual liberation is presented in The Great Gatsby when Daisy got up and went over to Gatsby and pulled his face down, kissing him on the mouth. 
despite being in her husband's home. Myrtle's hedonistic sexuality is presented when she smiles slowly, looking Tom flush in the eye. Then she wet her lips. Here, Myrtle and Tom's volatile and purely lustful relationship is exhibited. Indeed, when Myrtle first met Tom, she couldn't keep her eyes off him. Interestingly, Myrtle is sexualized throughout. Nick comments that Myrtle carries her flesh sensuously, and even when she dies, her left breast was swinging loose like a flap. Men, too, exhibit their sexuality in the novel. Tom repeatedly cheats on Daisy and once in a while he goes off on a spree and makes a fool of himself but he always comes back. Here male sexuality is forgivable. Myrtle dies because George found out that she had another life with Tom so female sexuality is unforgivable. In fact Christian Ramos notes that by attempting to maintain his way of life Tom has reduced whole peoples to ashes without any thought of consequences. Tom's infidelity and hypersexuality kills those around him in a careless manner. In fact, when Nick runs into Tom at the end of the novel, Tom is buying a pearl necklace. Readers can speculate whether the pearl necklace is an apology gift for yet another scandal or maybe it's a gift to a new lover. Thus, both texts present love through sexual hedonism. However, The Great Gatsby highlights the potential consequences of this. Additionally, Marvell presents love as lust at the end of the poem through the hedonism of sexual language he uses. He writes, Let us sport us while we may and tear our pleasures with rough strife. Here, the innuendos present love as lust. Marvell's sexual language is daring for the standards of his time. His decadent sexuality underlines his hedonistic desires. Indeed, the Society of Renaissance Studies writes in 2014, Marvell's poem presents a double picture of libertine verse and the version of Epicurean philosophy informing it. Marvell's speaker attempts to liberate the constraints of society on the act of sex and he uses the Epicurean philosophy to do this. This philosophy revolves around the notion that pleasure is the greatest good. In contrast, Gatsby's love is much more innocent and reserved. When Gatsby kisses Daisy forever wed his unutterable vision to her perishable breath and she blossomed and she blossomed for him like a flower. Whilst a flower simile can be indicative of sexuality, there is no lewdness hinted. Gatsby's love for Daisy is genuine and pure. Nick comments, I think he revalued everything in his house according to the measure of response he drew from Daisy's eyes. Yet his hedonism is articulated through his money and his lifestyle, all in the pursuit of Daisy. Gatsby bought his house so that Daisy would be just across the bay. He even read the Chicago paper for years just for the chance of catching a glimpse of Daisy's name. He makes his money through bootlegging so that he can win Daisy. In the end, Daisy's only fascinated by his beautiful shirts and the celebrities he has at his parties. Thus, whilst Marvel uses sexual language to portray lust, Fitzgerald highlights Gatsby's love to be void of actual lust. Lastly, both to his queen mistress and the great Gatsby present love as lust through death imagery. Marvell jokes about death and the death of lust. He writes, Into ashes all my lust. The graves are fine and private place, but none, I think, do there embrace. Here, death is used to portray lust. Indeed, sexual orgasms are commonly referred to as deaths. In fact, the French phrase is la petite mort. Death, therefore, is symbolic of lust. Indeed, Rumour's reflection of Marvell's ingeniously extended fantasies extended further in the images of death. In contrast, in The Great Gatsby, death of lust results in the death of marriages and relationships forever. Myrtle and Tom's relationship ends with Myrtle's death. Daisy and Gatsby's love ends with Gatsby's death and Myrtle's death leads to the death of her marriage with George and the death of George. This links to the idea that Gatsby is a serious melancholic lover whilst the speaker is light-hearted and lustful. 
And there's both texts use death to portray lust. However, whilst Marvel uses death to highlight the consequences of not acting on lust, Fitzgerald uses death to highlight the consequences of actually acting on lust. This marks the end of this video. If this has helped you, comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and click the bell to get post notifications whenever I upload. Until next time, stay safe and see you very, very soon.